As Paul's coming up, as Pastor Charlene said, today we are beginning our stewardship emphasis. We will continue for four Sundays, ending on October 22nd, Pledge Sunday, where we will have a modified potluck. You'll be hearing more about that. But I want to call your attention to the bulletin cover. Our theme is, because of you, our church changes lives. And each Sunday, there will be an insert. This Sunday, the theme is stewardship for a thriving planet. And I invite you to take this home and read it. There are some questions for reflection afterwards. So as we engage in these four weeks, remember, because of you, our church changes lives. And now Paul's going to talk about our first Sunday. I've been invited to share some thoughts. That's always, that's always dangerous to, to share your thoughts. But I have a few thoughts about stewardship that I would like to share this morning. The first is where the idea came from. Stewardship is a concept, an idea, that's found in the Old Testament as well as the New. And the first example of a steward is in the book of Genesis, where Abraham, the father of three faiths, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, we all claim Abraham as our, as our forefather. Abraham was looking for a, a wife for his oldest son, Isaac. And he called to him his most trusted servant. The man's name is never mentioned in the Old Testament. We have no idea what he was called. But he was the first steward entrusted by Abraham with a big job. I want you to go back to my homeland and pick out a wife for Isaac. The future of our family depends upon you. And now we know the future of three faiths depended on this person. A major responsibility. Well, whoever this person was, he accepted the challenge and went back and picked out a very lovely and amazing woman named Rebecca. You know the story. He picked out Rebecca and he brought her back for Isaac. And Isaac looked upon her and loved her. It's a great story. It's a great story of someone accepting major responsibility, and that's what a steward does. A steward in Abraham's day was entrusted with the keys. The most important thing you can give to somebody is the keys to your fortune, to your home, to everything you own. And so the keys were given and trusted to this steward, the keys to the future of the family. Jesus later, much later, entrusted Peter with the keys. Remember when Jesus changed his name? He said, you are a rock. You are Peter, and to you I give the keys to the kingdom of God. I don't know if you realize this, but the symbol of the keys is implanted in the architecture of St. Peter's in Rome. And the steward of the church, the Pope, is entrusted with the keys. Well, we Protestants 
say, that's nice. Peter can have the keys for the Catholic Church, but we give the keys to everybody. You are Peter. To you, Jesus gives the keys. And this is my second thought. You have the keys to this church. Maybe not literally. Maybe you don't carry church keys in your pocket, but you carry the keys to the future of this church in your pocket or in your bank account, or in your credit cards. This church is, uh, and this leads me to my third thought, this church is going through the same changes that all the other churches in America and Canada are going through. I graduated from seminary in 1953, that's a long time ago, Eisenhower was our president and churches were growing. Everywhere you looked, there was a new church being constructed. It was a lot more fun to grow the church than it is to watch it decline. But this year, for the first year in the history of the United States, there are fewer people who are church members than, than out of the majority, which now is not churched. That means there are fewer and fewer of us carrying the keys. We are stewards of this church. That's a major responsibility. And we carry it rather well, I think. I'm proud of the way we behave as members of this church. We support the church very generously. I expect all of us can do more, but we support the church very generously. And that's what it means, one of the things it means to be a steward. Stewardship, the practice of servanthood, the practice of taking responsibility for something much greater than ourselves. Stewardship. Your name has been changed. You are a steward. And to you, Jesus gives the keys of the kingdom of God. Continue, I pray to carry those keys with pride and with devotion. Today, if you go into Fellowship Hall, you'll find some people who are practicing stewardship on our church. They're repairing a, a window that has suffered from water damage over the last few years. And, and this is very important because once they fix that window, we hope DCFS, the Department of Children and Family Services, will grant the license that we need for a nursery school to operate in our fellowship hall. Once that license is granted, children will come in, young children, and dollars will come in as well, and part of the cost of maintaining this building will be covered eventually by contributions from those who are renting the hall as a school. It's important for us to think of our fellowship hall in the future as a school. A school needs security. We must protect the children, that's uppermost. We must have security that protects those young lives and helps them thrive. So part of what's going on today in repairing our building in the one day we could get people capable of doing that job, the stewardship that is being practiced is building repair. That's important.
getting our building up to speed so it can pass the test of being a safe place for children with no longer having plaster fall down that little kids pick up and eat. Terrible. They say it tastes like chocolate. Well, you're not going to find me eating that stuff, and they shouldn't either. But we must make sure that there's no plaster anywhere within reach where those children can poison themselves. So I beg of you and encourage you and ask you, accept your stewardship. Be faithful as one to whom something very important has been entrusted and support this church as generously as you can. Thank you.